Hello, hello, hello. This is your girl. You know my name. You can read it up there. <laughs> um, this is a video that is about anything and everything that just pops up in my head. I'm, I'm, on, I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> and right now, I'm feeling frustrated. Um, I've been feeling frustrated on and off for several years now and in, in I would have to say it has to do with my career or lack thereof um, I'm just not where I would like to be career wise and I am thinking about moving um, in order to obtain that career job that I went to school for <sighs> but I'm married <laughs> I'm not a single woman and I do believe that the wife should go where her husband goes or where he will be and he's comfortable with his employer his career the location um, he was born and raised in this region, so this is what he's familiar with. A lot of people flock here for jobs and to have that American dream. And it's just not working for me. I've been here for about 15 years, you know. And I would say about 10 years ago, I experienced what well, many experience when they're trying to find work. But now that the recession is what it is right now, it's just exhausting. <laughs> and my husband and I, we've had this conversation before, and I'm like, you know what? You know I've been trying. You've been looking for work for me. I've been looking for work for myself. I've applied all these positions, and... I'm just ready to kind of pull myself away from this region to find my blessing somewhere else. But again, I'm married. So I'm kind of torn because I really want to move and find happiness somewhere else, wherever the job may take me. But then I have this husband who's very comfortable and you have to nudge him a lot or get on his nerves in order for him to change. <sighs> so, this video is just me venting. And I just want to start over. Do any of you just want to start over out there? Just, just call your losses and just start over just a new new slate just somewhere else in my case I'm married <laughs> I told him I was like you know what if an employer wants me I go on an interview or whatever find out they want me when can I start I'm going and I was like you have a year <laughs> to figure out if you're coming with me or not I mean that's kind of rough right but I'm like we can't have a successful marriage and I'm 2,000 miles away I need my husband with me and I don't think it will work I gotta understand if I was like in a military or something I mean that comes with the territory but if I find work somewhere in the west upper midwest west coast I'm gone. I'm gone. And I told him, like, you know what? We could do what our friends did. They have a condo that they didn't sell. They're actually renting it. Renting it. But they moved to Texas. Actually, it was Roanoke, Texas. And then they were renting an apartment there. And then they ended up buying a home in, outside of Dallas, Texas. So, like, the outskirts of Dallas, uh, within a year of moving there, um, yeah, it was awesome for them. 
And I'm like, you know what? We could probably do the same thing. I mean, we can rent out our home and, you know, maybe get a one-bedroom apartment somewhere else until we get established. And then from there, see where life takes us. But again, we're dealing with my husband. He was born and raised in this region. He's comfortable with his employer, with his career, with his team that he works with. And I'm like, you know what? At this point, I'm, I'm unsuccessful trying to find um, paid work in the field that I study for. I'm like, I'm gonna just, I may just have to move. <laughs> um, there's some regions I'm not really excited about. I mean, I don't like inner cities at all. <laughs> um, so wherever I go, I probably will end up having to have a car. And I have a car now, but I'm just thinking about the cost of living in that area. Um, how far of a commute will it take? I mean, they, the area I live in, commuting is horrible. It's just, it's just the way it is. It's just very <sighs> congested. And so I want to make sure wherever I end up is less traffic. Um, these are the places I don't want to live for work. I don't want to live in New York City. Let's just say New England in general. I don't want to work in LA. I don't want to work in Atlanta. I would prefer to stay out of the entire state of Texas. Um, never really thought about South Carolina. So I don't have an opinion about that place. Um, I don't want to work in the state of Oklahoma. And it could be my biases, but I don't want to be anywhere where it's congested. It's too hot. Um, there's not enough diversity. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> and I don't want to be anywhere where it's too cold. I mean, I like it cold, but not like 10 below zero cold. No. So I don't want to be in Alaska. Let's just put it that way. <sighs> Where I would like to be is Mid-Atlantic area. Um, I'm thinking about Miami, Florida, but I'm like, I'm not really a Miami type of girl. <laughs> so that probably get old real quick. I thought about San Diego. I've heard so many great things about that area. Um, the reason why I, I, I'm not excited about LA is because I've been out there and I guess you could say I've been out there as a tourist, so I don't know, but to me, it's just so many plastic and fake people. I wasn't impressed. I've been to Atlanta, not impressed there, not enough diversity. You got a lot of bougie, new money black folks that get on my last nerves. <laughs> that, that is annoying to me. Um... New England because it's so expensive. I'm coming from an expensive place. I don't need to move somewhere else trying to make it scuffling by living in two different households because I'm trying to find work. And yeah, no, <laughs> no Baltimore. I have family there. I spent summers there in the city of Baltimore. I'm not impressed. It's not enough diversity. It's too much crime. And it's too big. It's, it's a really big city. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I know there's a lot of, a lot of places that I could end up at. <laughs> but, and of course, Hawaii. I mean, I would love to be out there. <sighs> In particular, the Big Island. I'm not a fan of congested areas. Um, no. <laughs> and it's like wherever there's like it's really, really expensive to live, you come across a lot of fake 
self-absorbed, um, egotistic people. You know, it's like follow the money, and you will find a lot of them type of people. And it's so annoying, and it, it's disgusting to me. Um, I don't know, maybe that's the country girl coming out of me. <laughs> I'll take the country any day. The problem is there is a lack of jobs, so you have to consider that. And if you do live out in the country and you decide to commute to a more urban area to find work, then you got to consider the commute. So that's kind of like a <sighs> catch-22. Yeah. And then the areas that I really want to live in, like let's say North Carolina, Again, lack of jobs. Um, North Carolina is pretty much home to me. Um, my people are from North Carolina. But yeah. And, and then I have this husband who... His field of work is not booming down there. Let's just put it that way. So then I have to consider that. I'm like, wherever I end up, Whichever employer wants me, um, I have to consider his field of work and, and if it will be harder or easier for him to transition. Um, there's always prostitution. <laughs> and I joke about this all the time. There's been uh, some comedian. I can't think of the name of the comedian, but he made a comment. He was like, Women should not be broke or should not be homeless or something like that because sex is a powerful thing. <laughs> and I would say, yes, sex is, is, is powerful. And it also depends on the type of man and what type of woman he's into. And um, those women will, if that's the... That line of work, you know, they'll make money. <sighs> My goal is not to get into prostitution. <laughs> Lord help me. But I know some people who are forced into that type of um, lifestyle or that line of work because they feel like that's the only way and they can make a decent living. Because when all else fails, you can open your legs. <laughs> and I hate to... I hate to laugh about it, but it's true. You know, if all else fails, you can rely on selling your body. And Lord knows, I do not want to go down that route. <laughs> I'm like this. I'm a married woman. If my husband has to take two or three jobs, and so be it. He'll be miserable, but at least I keep my uh, <laughs> my dignity, right? But see, that's the thing. Like we 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 entered into this relationship, and it was more me than him. But he agreed. It was like whatever bills you come into this relationship, those are your personal bills, like your car loan, your student loans, things of that nature, and bills that we share, like a mortgage, uh, utility bills, things of that nature. That would be something we share. So. I would feel so bad if it comes to the point where, okay, I'm going to stay only in this area and I'm only going to get a job in this area and then nothing happens and everything's on him, all the bills, and he has to take two or three jobs. You know, to me, I'm like, you know what? Let's move. Let's move somewhere that's more affordable. <laughs> I like this area because of the school district and less crime and it's diverse and blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, I don't have any kids. So I really don't have to worry about the school system right now. I'm the type of person I look ahead. I'm, I'm always looking five, ten years down the road, you know, thinking about children I don't even have yet, trying to prepare for them. I've been doing this for years, trying to trying to make the best life that I can so when they're coming up they have better opportunities than I had that's great but right now I need to live for me <laughs> and my husband 
and trying to make it. And I'm like, you know what? Let's just move. Let's move somewhere that's more affordable. But I don't know. You know, I was, I don't know if they're going to have, you know, my field of work down there and da 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 da. And I'm like, you know what? Yes, they have your field of work. My thing is, if you're more experienced and you have the credentials and certifications and all of that, and you go somewhere where there's less competition, guess what? Ding, ding, ding. That's a gem in a rough because then you'll be able to get the, the better paying job. May not be as much as you're making now, but compared to the cost of living, you have apartment here that's $1,400 a month versus apartment there. Same size, square footage, room, pretty much the same built for like 600 bucks. I mean, you do the math, but whatever. <sighs> so... I am in this funk right now with this career thing. Um, I graduated almost a year ago, actually, May of 2012. Been looking actually for work since October 2010. Well, really July 2010, yeah. And just nothing is happening. And it's like, okay, well, while I'm looking for opportunities, I'm going to go ahead and continue my education. Let's look into healthcare. Healthcare is on the rise according to Occupational Outlook. I'm always looking at that website, just seeing what's the trend and what fails to focus in you know, job growth over the next 10 years, and healthcare is booming. The problem is, I don't have any clinical background, so that's why I went into management. And the problem is fellowships. I like trying to get a regular permanent job. These fellowships, they are training opportunities, hands-on projects. So when you do look for permanent work, you can always brag about it in a job interview. These are the projects that I helped with. This is how much we helped the company save money. Let me show you what we did or what I did. That's great. But again, those fellowships are like being in country, a country club. It is. Who knows you. What connections do you have? And I am disgusted because you go to school, you spend all this money, then you got to turn around and get a fellowship, not just an internship. See, I, got it. I had an internship. Oh no, things have changed since I went to college. <laughs> 10 years later, okay, things have definitely changed. So when I got out of my master's program last year, then I was like introduced to fellowships. And I'm like, you mean to tell me the internship is not good enough now? Now I got to get a fellowship and fellowships are a dime a dozen. And I'm like, man. And so they nitpick with, you know, the candidates. It's, it's, it's just very disappointing. To say the least. <sighs> yeah. So anyway, I'm, I'm in I'm in a place right now where I am looking for employment in other regions. But again, I don't want to move to a region that's more expensive than this area. I don't want to move to a region that's extremely cold. I don't want to live in a region that is extremely hot and humid. I get enough of that here. I don't want to live in a region that's not diverse. Yeah. And I don't want to live in a region where you get a job and you're miserable because the people around you that you work with and for 
are evil. <laughs> evil people. <sighs> Sometimes I, I wish I could just write a book. Tell Oprah about it. Have her tell her book club, everybody to read my book. <laughs> I probably could write a book. <sighs> a book about advice what I experienced so far in my life and if I could turn back time, the hands of time, what I would have done differently. Um, I think I have a lot of advice I can give people. I wish I was talented. I wish I was super duper duper smart so I can get all the scholarships, all the grants. I wish I was talented. Something. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm like, I wish I had something to offer and get a decent paycheck. Because I'm, I'm, at this point, I'm blending in with everybody else, all the other applicants. I don't stand out. Um, I'm usually more qualified than others, but for whatever reason, the other people get the jobs. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I just don't know. <laughs> I'm like, okay, do I supposed to leave this country and maybe try to find work somewhere else? But then I'm like, okay, you have people fighting and trying to get in this country for whatever reason and it's like why would I go to another country to find work and what country will accept me um yeah do you ever feel like you just you just You don't belong anywhere. Well, that's how I feel about my job hunting. Yeah, in a nutshell, that's that's how I feel. So anyway, <sighs> besides prostitution, <laughs> besides mopping floors and cleaning people's toilets, I'm like, what could I do with all of this education and no one's biting? So there may be more people out there like myself who are just so exhausted with this whole job market. It's like sometimes I wonder, okay, should I have joined a sorority? Should I have been more involved in groups? Um, I don't know. I worked with one of my um, friends. I actually helped him get a job years ago in the real estate business. And, you know, I moved on, did other things. And he moved on, did other things. But it seemed like he was getting jobs left and right. Left and right. And I'm like, okay, I work with this dude, okay? He doesn't even have a college degree. I went to school with him, but he never finished. I'm like, what? What? Yeah. He has connections. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, where can I find these connections? But again, I'm not in a sorority, so I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I know people. They bend the rules. I know they break laws, you know, they're part of groups and they get special privileges. <sighs> I don't know. Then there's affirmative action, but I'm not benefiting from affirmative action. I mean, I'm not. I think that people should be hired based on their credentials. Be it fair or not fair. 
Um, it is what it is. And again, I'm seeing people with less credentials than me getting these jobs. So I don't know what it is. I don't know if I am uh, I'm an, I'm intimidating people who don't want to work with someone like myself because I might outshine them. I don't know. You have a lot of that going on too. Maybe people are hiring people so they know, oh, this person can't take my job. So she may be able to, but this one I know ain't. So I'm going to go ahead and hire that poor person. You know that's wrong. You know that, right? Well, anyway, I'm done talking. Peace and blessings. Bye-bye.